NFL regular season final home game in the most electric and passionate environment in spring football. The Dome, home of the St. Louis Battlehawks. Kaka Nation doing their part to get their team in the postseason. Today, the Battlehawks hosting upset-minded Orlando. Disappointment for St. Louis last week against rival Seattle. A win would have put the Battlehawks in the playoffs. However, Jacor Pearson was relentless and slippery. Seattle harassed A.J. McCarron, picking him off twice, and Ben DiNucci with a cold-blooded flex. Ball game. With the Seattle win, it all rides on what happens this weekend. Two spots remain in the final weekend. One will go from the south. Arlington, if they get a dub, they go. San Antonio still in the mix in the north. It's down to St. Louis and Seattle. Here's Battlehawks head coach Anthony Becht. All right, do it for yourself today. You've earned the right. You've done it for your families and friends and whoever you may have done it for. Do it for yourself. Go up there and lay it on the line, man. All right, go out there and lay it on the line, and we'll, we'll see what happens at the end of the game, and we'll see what happens at the end of the week. All right, but play great today. Have fun. Be loose. And get it done, man. You guys deserve this. But you get what you deserve when you take it. Go take it from them today. All right? So much aligned this weekend. St. Louis and Seattle are two of the biggest favorites that we've seen all season long. Why is this intriguing? Well, if both teams win, we go down to the fourth and potentially fifth tiebreaker to send the team from the north into the XFL playoffs. It's convoluted, but that's why we are here. From St. Louis, Loa Galindo here with Sam Macho. Coaches say it all the time, one game at a time. But for Anthony Beck, he's basically got two. He's got to beat Orlando while also trying to catch Seattle and scoring offense and defense or pass them in one of those categories categories to have a shot. It's crazy. Well, coaches always talk about control, what you can control. There's so much that's uncontrollable, that's out of your control. They need to score at least 19 points if you want to have one of the tiebreakers, or all else fails, hope that Seattle loses. I hope you're good at math. <laughs> I'm not. It's going to be tough. Here's Ian Fitzsimmons standing by with Coach Beck. Yeah, neither am I, Lowell. <laughs> Coach, Brian Hill, your, your leading rusher, he's out, not here. How do you overcome his absence when you need points? Uh, you know, we have a lot of depth on our team. Mateo Durant, Kareem Walker, and again, some opportunity today. It is a league of opportunity, and those guys are ready. They've been waiting for his turn, so uh, I'm excited to see those guys play. You almost need an advanced math degree to figure out the tiebreaker. How much does that impact your decisions? Well, look, we always try to go into the game trying to score a lot of points and not giving up many. Uh, you know, look, I'll push the envelope a little bit today. It's not about being aggressive. It's about trusting my players in those situations. I believe they're going to get it done today. I think we're going to bounce back like we always do. We're excited to see these guys play. Come away healthy. All right, thanks, Ian. Over to Taylor McGregor with, with DeAndre Francois. Thanks, Fitz. DeAndre, despite being out of playoff contention, what is the importance of this game for your team? Um, you know, we're playing for pride right now. You know, we're playing for dignity. You know, we're going to play hard. Even though we're not going to the playoffs, we still got to put on a show for the city of Orlando and just for each other, and we're going to play hard for each other. Thank you. Lowell? Taylor, thank you so much. And if you want to know what Terrell Buckley is playing for, he told us he had a conversation with Anthony Beck, who we played with with the Jets. Told him, I can't wait to send you to an early vacation alongside me. We asked him about motivation. Coach Buck said, there's a hundred different things that motivate me, but sending other teams home early is one of them. And this is already a sign of the significance of how you approach this game. St. Louis typically defers. Home team gets to choose, start with the football or kick it away. Anthony Beck has decided to start with the football to jumpstart this offense, which is the worst in the XFL in the first quarter. Once again, best crowd in the XFL on him. And here we go, Jose Borgales, short kick to the dangerous Darius Shepard. Shepard to the 30, and a flag is down. Hey, flag down here. Get the spot, yeah. Both, I think you and David are on the same one, so. 55 during the return. Yeah, 55, we're good there. Going from the spot, 10 yards, first down. During the during return, return, holding number 55, receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. It's first down, St. Louis. 
So we're going to talk a lot about the tiebreakers. The fourth tiebreaker is your combined rank in the division in scoring offense and scoring defense. Seattle leads St. Louis by one spot in both. Here's the bottom line. St. Louis needs to score 20 more points than Seattle does this weekend to pass them for scoring offense and allow seven fewer points than Seattle to pass them in scoring defense. Do you have that down, Sam? That, there's that and there's so much more. But this game will come down to, yes, winning, but also how you win. A.J. McCarron back at quarterback for St. Louis leads the XFL in touchdown passes. McCarron will check it down to Mateo Durant. Durant picks up the first down. How he does is going to be critical because Brian Hill was a fantastic security blanket for A.J. McCarron. Brian Hill is one of the best backs in the XFL. He's out this week, so it's going to be Mateo Durant. It's going to be many other weapons, even on the outside, to help this offense go. Brian Hill, second leading rusher in the XFL. Ace the mic. Behind Abram Smith, Set. out. One eighty, Back-to-back carries for Durant, and quickly met by the Guardians' defense. And Savion Patton has gone to ball, the bunch right. Fifty-one X spot spacing. Right. Fifty-one X spot spacing. Fifty-one X spot. Fifty-one. 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 It's a play no, call from. One former right. NFL quarterback to another. Bruce Gradkowski right. to A.J. McCarron. We're good. We're good. St. Louis with only 12 Wait. points in the loss to Wait. Seattle. Coming off their lowest scoring game of the season. Back to Durant. Initially slipped through one contact from Terrence Smith. May have gotten one extra yard to set up a crucial third down. And that was a great tackle by Terrence Smith. He's up to his game. This entire Orlando defense has played better and better and better in the last half of the season. Talked to one of their defenders. He said, man, we started getting rid of guys and then guys who really wanted to win. Third and seven. Nothing downfield yet for A.J. McCarron. He's got the receivers to exploit. A questionable secondary for Orlando. Marcel Aitman at the top of the screen. Gary Shepard at the bottom in 11. McCarron trying to get out of the pocket. This is where he struggled last week, and he's hit and brought down. Tigre Scales with the stop on third down. So first of all, give credit to Tigre Scales. This dude's been on a journey since he was at Indiana back six years ago. Eyes on the quarterback. You see A.J. McCarron, you step up, and then you go sideline to sideline. Don't, don't get out of your coverage. Everyone else stays in coverage, and then you do your job as Stansley Mapongo doing his little dance. <laughs> He's 32 years old. He might be old for that. <laughs> but I respect you, Stansley. Stansley at 32, the hips don't lie. <laughs> Justin Rogers back deep. We do have two punters in Sterling Hoffrichter and Matt Brown that have successfully executed fakes this year. Rogers return. We do have a flag. And he is brought down at the 22-yard line by Will Flag Harvey. down here. Flag down. Hang tight before we punt. Illegal formation. All right, so we're going to tack on five from there. Illegal formation. Illegal formation, kicking team, not enough players on the line of scrimmage. Five-yard penalty, it's first down, Orlando. Here's Guardians head coach Terrell Buckley before the start of the game. Play hard for 60 minutes and let's finish. Finish every play the right way. Finish, 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 finish. Hard and finish, see it before it happens. Lando Guardians! And a new motto for T Buck this week. The Guardian Way. And what that is, is a team that's organized, disciplined, and detailed. They had such problems with penalties at the beginning of the season. They've cleaned that up. And now after this St. Louis penalty, they want the Battle Hawks to re-kick. Well, it's a smart play by Coach Buckley, having the, the offense punt hits again. Why? Because these, these guys, you can be tired running down the field on a punt, and so hopefully you get a bigger return, like you told Justin Rogers. And that three and out has to be deflating for St. Louis, putting so much stock into how they played this game. Rogers fumbled it. 
It's still loose. Does Orlando get it back? The ball is down at the 20 yard line, and it will be Guardians football. Well, we talked about this earlier. You have to find the ball or find a way to get points on offense or slow down points on defense. Sometimes you don't even have to force it. The ball will come to you. So in this punt, the ball came the St. Louis Battlehawks way, but don't force it. Relax, let the ball come to you. Great effort play right there by Lakia Henry. Wow. The Ole Miss Rebel able to pounce on that, saving points for Orlando. So here is DeAndre Francois making his first start. Power formation by the Guardians. Francois on the run and will just throw this away. Francois looked like he was going to be the next great one out of Florida State. Had a fantastic freshman year. However, in the season opener in his sophomore campaign, hurt his knee against Alabama. His career has never really been the same. He, he led Florida State to their biggest comeback win in school history. Threw for over 400 yards and two touchdowns. The injury derailed his career. Now he's trying to revitalize that flashy career. Good news for him, he's got Cody Lattimore, second leading receiver, wearing number 11, back over the middle and through the hands. He was looking for Ryan Becker, and it was there. 11. Let's go dose right. No, let's go twins right, twins right, scat right, Y option five. Twins right, scat right, Y option five. Comeback 81. That's a former comeback 81. Gator and Shane Matthews call them plays to Francois, and it's nuts inside the door. Francois with time, sideline, and cut by Charleston Rambo out of Miami. So we've had a Noel, a Gator calling the plays, and a reception to a Kane. And you, sure, you heard Shane Matthews say to 81, which is Jordan Thomas, comeback. Well, also on the other side, deep comebacks on the outside. Get past the sticks, get past the first down line marker, and then give your quarterback an, a, a target to hit. And so we, we also hear the audio from head coach or hey, even Daddy. coordinator to their Daddy. receivers. Let's see it. That's been one of the themes this week for Terrell Buckley. He just wants to see what Francois has. Check down, Devin Darrington. Darrington slips one to the 50. For the former Harvard Crimson and Virginia Cavalier. Keep an eye on Devin Darrington. He's specially sixth in the XFL in rushing, yet he missed the first three games. He graduated from Harvard. 2020, his season got canceled, transferred to UVA. But that was a pass-happy offense. He says, finally, I get an opportunity to shine. He did it last week over 100 rushing yards. He's starting off strong this week. Keep an eye on 26, Devin Darrington. to the run game. Nowhere to hide. Travis Feeney will find you. The ninth TFL for the Washington Husky. Okay, so keep an eye on, on Darrington. Keep an eye on Feeney <laughs> as well. So Travis Feeney, he has five sacks on the season, but he's more than just a sack artist. He's a great defensive player. Got drafted in the sixth round by the Steelers from University of Washington. This guy's 6'4". He's 240, 35-inch vertical. He's a freak athlete, but he's also just as smart of a player. Francois over the middle and cut. Brought in by Dan Williams. Let's check in with Fitz on the St. Louis injury situation. Daddy, Daddy. Darrington close to the sticks on third down. You're not able to get Fitz's audio, but the situation here, Nate Maters is out with a high ankle issue. Mike Rose, star linebacker, is also out. Ben DeLuca at safety has been out for quite some time. And Silas Kelly, another standout linebacker, is out with a concussion. So the back seven for St. Louis is razor thin. Standout low oh, is an oh, understatement. Oh. Mike Rose, for example, Fair. NFL coaches have hey, been hey, calling hey. about him during this XFL hey, season. Hey, hey. So 
the missing pieces on this team may potentially be detrimental. Francois. Charleston Rambo for the second time. And when it comes to the different tiebreaker scenarios, the best path for Seattle and St. Louis is defensively. If St. Louis is going to catch Seattle in one of those categories, the easiest way to do that is with scoring defense. Well, the best path for St. Louis specifically is just to hope that Seattle loses. Why? Seattle's playing a division game, and so if Seattle loses that division game against Vegas, St. Louis will have a better divisional record, which is one tiebreaker ahead. So St. Louis would like a shutout. Down the sideline, just out of the fingertips of KD Cannon. Down, flag down. And we do have a hanky down. What number you got on that? 38. 38 defensive hold, defensive five yards and a first five down. Yards, yeah. 38. Holding number 38. Defense, five yard penalty, automatic. First down. Brandon Sebastian called for the hold. And the advantage that Seattle has in all of this, of course, the pressure of winning, they will know their magic numbers on what they need to score and what they can allow for their finale against Vegas on Sunday, you, the final game of the year. You talked about it, Lowell. Last week, these two teams played each other. Play action. Francois, huge drop and just has to get rid of that. Last kill. Second leading rusher in the XFL. McCarron. Pump fake, went back over the middle to Akeem Butler, one of the breakout stars in the XFL. Taylor. Guys, something to pay attention to on Orlando's defensive line. Their bestie lineman, Savion Patton, is out for the rest of the game with a glute injury. Taylor, thanks for that update. So it's late season. Keep in mind, no bye weeks in the 10-game schedule for all XFL teams. Second and five. McCarron wants it all. He's got it. Fight on out of USC. Now we understand why AJ McCarron leads the XFL in passing touchdowns with 18. It's his timing, his poise, and his leadership. Notice him looking off the safety. He's looking in the middle of the field. So the safety think he's throwing in the middle. The last second, he looks outside, gets his hips outside, and drops a dime in the bucket for whoa, Mitchell. Whoa! 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 M spot. Set. And Karen now playing traffic cop. He has a freedom to call many of these plays at the line. McCarron on the dart. That's who you want to leave it high to. Akeem Butler couldn't bring it in. And the reason you say that, so Akeem Butler is six foot six inches tall. That was a perfectly, but you see him smiling. He knows he should have ca ca caught that one. But what I'm interested in seeing is, remember a few weeks ago, they got Akeem Butler involved early in the game, and all of a sudden he went crazy. And so, we saw that early catch, just a short catch, but now you're getting him involved early, he starts to build even more confidence as the game goes on. No catches last week on only two targets. Marcel Aitman, number three. That was the go-to guy early. Y80! Wait a Flag down. Back to Butler. Butler hit immediately. Got a flag down. And the Orlando Illegal defense. Illegal formation, 78. We only have six Smith. men on the line of scrimmage. The ball was touched behind. They're going to want it, right? Yes. Illegal formation. Illegal formation. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still second down. Correction. Orlando would like to decline that penalty. It's third down. You're good with that, Sam. I am. You hear some of the boos in the in the stands, but the bigger picture is it's third down at the 17-yard line. Don't give the offense an extra down. Force them to get this first down in the red zone. So I love that decision. Tight. All right, tight one double robber. Safety showdown. Hey, tight one go. double robber. Turn Safety left. showdown. Two jet Camaro. Camaro, you got the B line. They don't have to get it all here. Anthony back Set. planning on being very aggressive in fourth down situations in plus territory. That's going to lead us to a timeout. 
playoff spot on the line for St. Louis, but it's the Guardians with the early 6 nothing lead. We go in the first quarter, Orlando leads St. Louis 6-zip, and in talking to St. Louis head coach Anthony Beck before the game, he told me they're letting it rip, man. From between the 50 and the 30, fourth and three or less, they're going for it. Inside the 30, fourth and six or fewer, Lowell, they're going for it. You won't see a kicker out here very often for the Battle Hawks. Well, Fitz, that's really giving your team the best opportunity to reach the postseason. You have to play this game, but also play the game with the dynamics of the fourth tiebreaker that in will potentially face. come into play. In his face. Third and ten for McCarron. McCarron to the end zone. Overthrowing Stephen Mitchell. And it looks like St. Louis will take the points here. Smart. Donnie Hagman strolling out. That's a huge stop for Orlando. It is. And you heard the coverage beforehand. He talked about one robber, cover one. And so everyone's in everyone's in man-to-man. -man. And so CJ Holmes, number one, had the great man-to-man -man coverage, staying tight to his receiver and not getting handsy, not allowing a penalty. 35-yard attempt for Donnie Hagman. Just keep your eyes out. Anytime the specialists are on the field, something funky could be happening in this game. St. Louis with three points after their first two drives. Not what they wanted. But they got to win this game. Hope for a little help along the way as well. Week 10 in the XFL continues with Good the job. defenders of the Brahmas guys. at 3 Eastern over on ABC. And tomorrow, the Renegades host the Roughnecks at 3 Eastern on ESPN with the Vipers and Sea Dragons at 7 on ESPN2. Every game is also available on ESPN+. Plus. Look, this is a breakdown in the South. If Arlington wins, they are in. If Arlington loses and San Antonio wins, the Brahmas have the edge in those tiebreak scenarios. They will go to the playoffs. So every single game this weekend matters. So this game matters. We talked about it already. But after this game, San Antonio gets a win. They'll be watching, hoping Arlington loses. Then that Arlington game, we heard it. If Arlington wins, they're in. Then the last game of the XFL regular season, Vegas and Seattle. No matter what happens today, if Seattle loses, Correct. St. Louis is in. We talk so much about the fourth and fifth tiebreaker though because both St. Louis and Seattle are massive favorites. Two of the biggest favorites that we've seen all season long. Orlando doesn't care. Vegas almost beat the St. Louis team a couple weeks ago. So we know it could be some upsets around the XFL to wrap it up. St. Louis relentless on pursuit and special teams. Carson Wells out of Colorado with the stop. Now Orlando, this is what they do. One of the best teams in the XFL in scoring on their opening possession. However, it typically slows down after that first drop. Well, this is why you have DeAndre Francois in the game. We saw it last week. He came in late in the game, but he was on that play when, when Devin Darrington had that huge 60-plus yard run. It was a zone read, and so the ability of Francois to be able to run the ball, that threat can slow down defenders and open up an offense. And so far, no targets to the second leading receiver in the XFL, Cody Lattimore. Darrington denied. By Kevin Atkins, the Fresno State Bulldog. You talk to any one of the coaches for St. Louis from beginning to end, Kevin Atkins is the name they continually say. He lines up on the inside. He's a big, physical human being. But they say, no, it's more than that. It's his technique in the run. It's his ability to rush the passer. Talk about NFL talent, yeah, NFL yeah. pedigree. He's the name they consistently say. Injured his peck while he was benching at his pro day workout. Couldn't do the on-field workouts. That hampered him from getting his shot in the NFL. This is his shot now. Francois has wheels. The pursuit, however, by Taniella Tupo. Let's go empty, uh, 11 Bulldog, 11 Bulldog, 11 Bulldog. Hey, Tupo was booking it there. Yeah, he's, got, right, he's, he's a former rugby player right, as well, so he's got this rugby right, experience hail. as well. Smash F drive Z under. Smash F drive Z under. Going right. 81, bring your split Play in. You got the corner. Bring your split in.
And Francois will have to call a timeout with one second on the play clock. What was happening there with the communication? So Shane Matthews, so in the XFL, we, there's extra communication, about 15 headsets. So coaches can talk to receivers or running backs, whoever you give these headsets to. Shane Matthews was telling tight end Jordan Thomas, hey, it's a smash route. You have the hey, corner. Hey, hey, hey. Come in tighter, a little Bob's bit right away from the, from the sideline because you're running a route to the outside. And so that's why he said, bring your split in, bring your split in. You need space to give your quarterback space. That's what that communication, it happened Keep late. And that's why the timeout was called. Here's Ball Francois. Right. Hey, go, go on left, go on left, go on left, go on left. Go on left, go on left, go on left. his second INT of the year. So story is an understatement. Brandon Sebastian lost his brother to colon cancer on October 19th, 2017. His brother Jordan was his hero. His brother said, man, Saturdays are my favorite day. And so everything he does, he does for his brother. Notice his eyes on that route. His eyes are on the quarterback. And then he goes and makes the play. Brandon Sebastian did the same thing in college, but in the XFL, he says, man, everything I do, I do for Jordan. He talks about his motto, DTD, dominate the day. Right there, Brandon dominated the play. And St. Louis with great field position at the 42. Clean pocket for McCarrick. This is where he struggled last week. When he felt pressure, he lost his footing. Was that a sign of a guy that had missed a week? I think it was more of a sign of a guy who had been injured a few weeks back. So three weeks ago, he had an injury. Last week, he came back. And sometimes you, you're not as confident to throw it. And so then you start to look around. And then you're, do I slide? Do I run? Now he looks a lot healthier. 50, X tank. 50. Coming 50, down to the final left. moments 50. of the first quarter. Set. Why did he? Why did In the traffic, and Aitman got crunched. Terrence Plummer, defensive leader, with a thump. And that brings us to the end of the first quarter. St. Louis doing a lot of chasing. They're chasing the Guardians on this scoreboard. They're chasing Seattle and the all-important rankings that determine the fourth tiebreak. St. Louis, Missouri, great city, great people, place to be in this final weekend of the XFL regular season. And all of our besties, they're inside the Dome in America Center. You just look around, Sam, this could be a college football bowl game. This is the same type of environment that we've seen at NFL games, that we've seen early season in college football. This is unbelievable, and it has been all season long. Well, this stadium is outstanding. Over 30,000 fans every single game thus far. And also, my I've played in the NFL for nine years. There are many NFL environments that don't feel like this. I've played in wow. this stadium, and it's just as loud when I've played as it is here. Still a chip on the shoulder. After the NFL was taken away, they have embraced the XFL with open arms. And you're looking at some of the biggest marks in spring football history. Wait, wait, wait. Third wait, and wait. six for McCarron to Akeem Butler. Butler has the sticks. Butler has more. Hop on and go for a ride with Akeem Butler for 29 yards. You know what I love, Lowell? Four weeks ago, when St. Louis played Las Vegas for the first time in Vegas, they fed Hakeem Butler, and it got their entire offense going. When all else fails, give it to your 6'6 receiver out of Iowa State. Let him do the rest. Sam, we've seen him, even with his days in the Cyclones, he does things not a lot of dudes can do. Last week, shut out. He is a factor here. Swinging it out. Oh, and a big collision for Stephen Mitchell. 
Ty Smith and Stephen Mitchell going head to head. Mono E, mono. Well, Ty Smith, he has NFL experience. So he's looking at this. He says, okay, Ooh. I have to bring, when, when you're in the red zone, you cannot hesitate. There's no tiptoeing. You have to come downhill and come downhill fast. That's what Ty Smith, Ty Smith did on that play. Now you're set off second and goal. And we have an injured Orlando Guardian coming off the field. That is Nick Coe, former Auburn Tiger. How important is finishing right here? Not with three, but with six. Well, it's important because of all that goes into this game, the point totals that we've talked about. Outscoring your opponent by at least 20 and then hoping that Seattle doesn't score. So that's why these, these points matter. You can't just walk away with three. You need six, and then maybe you get another three for the three-point conversion. Hey, both teams fighting for that Wait, bonus that. check for the winner as well. McCarron, Butler dropped it. Now, these are the throws that are head scratchers when it comes to Akeem Butler. He'll make the one-handed acrobatic catch, but we've done multiple games where he's dropping gimmies. Well, this isn't a drop. Give all credit to Ty Smith right there. Yes, it's tight coverage, and yes, you could potentially challenge and say pass interference, but I would argue that it's not. That's just great coverage playing on the inside, knowing that there may be a slant possible to a big-bodied receiver. So more of a hat tip to Ty Smith than a knock on Akeem Butler. Hands down. Third and goal. This is certainly Set. four down territory for Ready. AJ McCarron and St. Louis. A little inside pitch to Shepard, and it's going to come down to a tip pivotal. Jumbo, for Jumbo. Jumbo, Jumbo. Jumbo, Deuce Right King, 12 power plus. Why now? Jumbo, Deuce Right King, 12 power plus, why now? Deuce Right King, 12 power plus, why now? 12 power plus, Jumbo. St. Louis with an XFL low, three rushing touchdowns on the season. Here we go here. And a timeout, Orlando calls it. I got Can't him, I got him, enough, Just what this sequence means. Hey, make sure you guys check in here. again. Make sure you declare again, okay? Hey, let's go. So St. Louis with the dynamic of the potential for tiebreaker if they win and Seattle wins. They have to match them in both scoring offense and defense or pass Seattle in at least one of those categories. That means outscoring Seattle by 20 points. Or allowing seven fewer points than Seattle does this weekend. A lot of math involved, but it's the here and now. Fourth and goal. Carry to Kareem Walker. Walker is in. So notice, you heard Anthony Beck. He said, get that ball in there. This is not a pretty play. This is a physical football play. I don't care who our back is, whether it's Brian Hill, Kareem Walker. Good job, Dallas. Our offensive line has to dominate, and that's what we Good saw. Job, and how about Steven Gonzalez paving the way, a guy that Anthony Beck believes will end up in an NFL camp. Two-point conversion time from the five-yard line. Set. St. Louis is eight of 16 on the two pointers. McCarron, all morning, all afternoon, all night. What will he do with it? Corner, receiver goes down, there's no flag. Steven Mitchell, it looked like there was some contact. No flag was called. Becht is wondering if that was a missed call. As it stands, it's just six for St. Louis, but they take the lead. And they followed Steven Gonzalez, they followed the offensive line, and they trusted their gut. We're going to be dominant in this game.
The XFL is brought to you by the new National Geographic series, Secrets of the Elephants, now streaming on Disney+. Plus. How about the secret of a battle hawk? What is one? Why are they so dominant, etc.? I'm still trying to find out what the secret of the elephant is. Let me check that one out, too. You're intrigued. I'm intrigued. I'm it's sold. It's a successful promo. So AJ McCarron just engineered a touchdown drive to give his Battle Hawks the lead 9-6 over Orlando. Final weekend of the XFL regular season. Kick is a way to Dedrick Thomas. Thomas fields it at the six. Thomas out of Mississippi State trips and is hit and brought down at the 27 yard line. Nice Fascinating channel. the way this could all potentially play out. And that man, Terrell Buckley, is here just to spoil this party. He told Anthony Becht when he saw him yesterday, his former teammate, hey, I can't wait to send you to an early vacation just like me. He's and embracing that spoiler role. And we do these calls with coaches all, we've done them all season long. The smile that came across Terrell Buckley's face when we told him about the opportunity to spoil this dance. I hadn't seen a smile that hard in a very, very long time. Orlando playing their best football of the season, coming off back-to-back two-point losses as Jermaine Martin is hit by Willie Harvey out of right, Iowa State, the leading tackler right, for St. Right, Louis. Seattle, Z-Dig, X Shallow. Right there, 81. So you keep on hearing Shane Matthews talk to 81, Jordan Thomas. He's the tight end that had that phenomenal touchdown last week where he essentially just big-bodied the defender. He's going to be or should be a focal point all series long. And a former battle hawk to boot. Francois looking deep for Jamil. Almost picked off. Through the fingertips of Levert Hill. We saw him out of Michigan with a two interception game at Vegas. And you see this miscommunication. It's an obvious miscommunication between Jamil and Francois. But better is the awareness by Hill. You just have to come down with that. Great awareness. It's hard as a DB to try and track the ball that way. But he's, he's going to come down with the next one. We saw him do it a couple weeks ago. Had a couple picks. How is Francois' mind right now? It was almost two straight passes that were picked off. With one being picked off by Sebastian. Everybody's moving early. Yellow flags everywhere. Seven okay. False start, number 67. Offense, five-yard penalty. Still third down. That's on Brett Boyko, the left tackle. It's amazing how Orlando can look like world beaters on the opening drive. I mean, opening drive of the season, they marched the length of the field against Houston, scored, and then hit the brakes and part of that false start maybe because of this crowd noise we hear the crowd getting louder and louder and louder especially on a critical third and long francois is just going to check down bad decision bad intentions lavert hill I'm not saying that you go and you make up for a bad play, but as a player, sometimes psychologically you say, you know what, I'm going to go back to my technique. When the next one comes, I'm going to make it. Look at Hill's eyes. He just shuffles, shuffles, and immediately takes out the legs of Jermaine Martin out of NC State. North Carolina a &T. So a three and out after the interception for the St. Louis Battlehawks defense. Will we see the second coming of the Blandino? Mac Brown had the fake to KD Cannon. It led to a touchdown last week in San Antonio. Mac Brown, he's going to do it again for Jordan Thomas. Jump ball. Thomas got it. Thomas is still up. The former Battle Hawk rumbling to the sideline, to the end zone. What just happened? 84 yards! We tried to warn you! We tried to tell you! Orlando don't care! Talk about fearless! 
talk about talk about tired. First of all, Jordan Thomas running 84 yards for that touchdown. Tired, fearless. We're gonna go back and look at that play. Jordan hey, Thomas was initially on the sideline. Okay. I don't think he knew that the fake was up. Then he ran on the field. He crossed the numbers. You have to essentially cross the numbers. But he's not usually lined up that wide. That's what you have to be alert for. The fearlessness of a of a team that really doesn't care. <laughs> what, what's going on? How do we get all these fake punts? I mean, I'm not complaining, but there have been three crucial ones, and we've seen them all in succession. I'm going to give them time to figure this out, but too many players there. How about... Hey, what's the yardage on this? It's five, right? Five yards. Yeah. Illegal substitution, offense, five-yard penalty, two-point try. I mean, Matt Brown is stating his case to get some snaps at quarterback, right? Between Francois and Dormady, just let Matt Brown throw some jump ball. Well, last week, he, Matt Brown, the punter, had the 64-yard pass to KD Cannon. Now this week, Matt Brown, the punter, had the 84-yard touchdown pass to Jordan Thomas. So Matt Brown leads the XFL with 76 and a half yards per completion. The punter. <laughs> Not bad. Two-point conversion for Francois. Backside pressure. Finney brought him down. Helmet is loose. Ball is loose. Good response there by the St. Louis defense. All right. Break this down. I mean, it's poetry. This is a former battle hawk bringing it in in Thomas. Well, we heard Coach We heard coach talk about Matt Brown. He said, now, I got some punters that can throw, but not like this. And people who could catch, but not like this. Jordan Thomas, Mississippi State. He's 6'5", 277. But he ran a 4'7'4". He also, they used to call him Bone Crusher because he's a big body. And so Jordan Thomas, big body with speed. Here's Taylor. I'm with Mac Brown and Jordan Thomas. Guys, how many times had you practiced that? Um, how many yeah. times? Just a couple. Just a couple. <laughs> yes. it's, just, it's just natural, man. He's a ball player, man. He makes plays. Makes plays. Okay, but I saw you on the sideline, and it didn't look like you were going to get over. How did you make that play happen? Uh, oh, God, man. I mean, he's using me, so I can't, I can't complain. I'm, I'm getting the opportunity, a great opportunity to show what I can do, and I can't, I, I'm, I'm grateful, so I can't ask for anything more. And Mac, what were you looking to do there on that throw? Hey, he's a big body. I just had to put it up, let him go get it. He's a ball player, man. He's a baller. I'm lucky to have him on my side. I appreciate it. Guys. Sam, name another level of football where we would see a play like that, especially given where it started from. Low, there is none. <laughs> it is the XFL. Give me more. There he is, Shepard out to the 30. I mean, that's a gutsy move from Terrell Buckley. He's throwing it from a couple steps in front of the end zone. And, and, and it's about, it's yes, Terrell Buckley, the move. Yes, Matt Brown, the throw. But Jordan Thomas, after the cap, we, we'd love to say high and tight. It doesn't matter. You scored a touchdown. <laughs> There's T. Buck. Wow, Wait. Orlando taking the lead. St. Louis, your response. Mateo Durant with a good start. Takes it for about six yards. Just going back to that play, we were talking to Buckley earlier in the week, and he talked about, if we're gonna have a fake on, I don't wanna hear anybody looking to the sideline, is it still on, it's just throw it. And so that kind of confidence and fearlessness can come when there's trust between, I would say quarterback, but now I would say punter and head coach. And those points from Orlando, Wait, even if St. Louis comes back, wins this game, so damaging. And Surratt leaves his way to the 45. Because of the fourth tiebreaker, if both St. Louis and Seattle can win, it will go down to the fourth or fifth tiebreaker to see who gets in. Fourth tiebreaker is your rank, your combined rank in the division in scoring offense and scoring defense. These are the updated numbers. The big one and the most likely way that St. Louis was going to catch Seattle is by points Wait. allowed. Wait. But now that's an 18 point difference. As here's a shot to Shepard who brings it in. That's how they do it at North Dakota State. 
yards for Karen Shepard. Darius Shepard is a three-time North Dakota State college football champion. But more than that, he's a reliable receiver. He played with Trey Lance, who plays for the San Francisco 49ers. You listen to Trey Lance talk about Darius Shepard, said he's the most confident and consistent player I've been around. Wait. Wait, Kareem, the dream to the 10. And sometimes it doesn't matter who your running back is. Look at the, how big that hole is on the right side. Great job by Vidal Alexander making that hole wider. I mean, I could run through that. <laughs> wham, wham on, wham on, wham on. So as it stands, hey, St. Louis to make up ground and pass up. Seattle and scoring offense or defense Set. would need 20 more points than Seattle scores against Vegas. So that means they have to at least Whitey. get to 20. Whitey. Right now they've got nine on the board. Durant, right side, down to the seven yard line. Defensively uh, ten, is where ten, they ten. had the best shot, ten, ten, ten. catching Seattle. But now Seattle go, knows left, two jet going midnight. into their finale trips against left, Vegas, two jet midnight. they jet just have to hold the Vipers to 18 midnight. points or less to maintain that edge in scoring defense. And the truth is, Lo, you can't get too caught up in the numbers because we saw there was an early opportunity with that muff punt. You didn't take advantage of it. But also you saw with this game, the next one matters too. McCarrick. Back foot, Butler! Give it to him! We talked about with this offense, getting Hakeem Butler involved early. This was a simple corner route to the outside. It's not just his size. It's his route running ability. Akeem Butler had won on a few inside routes. Well, now he stems inside and goes outside. All that space, A.J. McCarron just lays it out there for him to catch. And it will be a two-point conversion as Butler makes Kaka Nation proud. Three-point lead for the Battle Hawks. We got TP in the end zone. Streamers coming Lighting. down left and right. See XFL, baby. McCarron hit as he throws to Aitman. Got it! to him. You see it right here. You see the corner route to the outside. Get it to your big body receiver. Get him involved early. Get him confident early. Five point lead. 12, 6.36 to go in the second quarter here with Akeem Butler. What your quarterback, A.J. McCarron, just tell you after that touchdown catch? Uh, no, he just did a good job, and he was just changing some signals. They got a couple of our guys on their team, so we're just trying to get it figured out. If I play to you one-on-one -on -one in basketball, who wins? What kind of question is that? That's what I figured. He's tall. Lowell? Uh, let me just sum it up like Bryce Harper would. That's a clown question, bro. <laughs> Keem Butler, what's lost in this conversation about the tiebreaker scenarios, who gets in, who gets out, what the individuals are playing for is a chance, a chance to get invited to an NFL camp, a chance to at least land a spot on a practice squad and go from there. And Akeem Butler has been in the NFL before. He played with the Cardinals in 2019, so he has NFL experience. Unfortunately, he hurt his hand and got injured. It wasn't so forgiving. Now people watch these games and say, get this guy back on my team. Dedrick Thomas get loose. He's got to beat the kicker, but the kicker with the edge. Wow, we saw Donnie Hagman just keep six points off the board. Here's Taylor. Thank you, Well, We're about to witness the quarterback change. Coach, why the change? It's, it's part of our game plan. Uh, he was always going to play. We just want to give Francois a start and get some reps in and see what he can do. Thank you. Lowell? So it's got to be Mac Brown at quarterback now, right? <laughs> he, might, he may be the third option. Behind Quentin Dormady who's really helped take this Orlando offense to a different level. It's been the combination of Shane Matthews taking over as the primary play caller and Dormady at quarterback. Dormady, deep, hits his man. Six more for Orlando. K.D. Cannon, another deep shot for the Baylor Bear. So... K. 
KD Cannon holds records at Baylor for receptions, receiving yards. He's a record holder, played with the Cowboys. They talked about him saying, man, he's one of the fastest players on our team. And this is what the players for the Dallas Cowboys said when he played. And so his speed is what stands out. So whether he catches it from Quentin Dormady like he did this week or from punter Matt Brown like he did last week, he's a big play machine. This entire game is really challenging my math skills. Some more quick math there. That's now three catches on the season for KD Cannon for 155 yards. Two-point attempt. Dormady complete. That's to Andrew Jamil. Two more points and Guardians adding. 20 to 17. This is inspiring to watch with Terrell Buckley, who's with Taylor. Coach, is that exactly how you drew it up? Yes. <laughs> yes, that is exactly. We had the post, we reading it, and then at two point, we finally trying to get some different plays in. What's allowed your offense to collect as explosive plays like we've seen through the first half? We're reading it, and we're calling it, and we're trying to make sure it happens. Instead of putting it on the board, we're actually trying to make it happen. Appreciate it, Coach. Lol. So think about this. Eight coaches in the XFL, four of them have head coaching experience. And those are the coaches most likely to end up in the postseason. The four other coaches don't have that experience. Terrell Buckley had a very difficult start to the year, to the point where he almost felt bad for what was happening with his Guardians team. But every week, it's been better and better, and he is so appreciative for this opportunity for him. I talked to Terrell Buckley before the game, right at, right in the tunnel outside of their locker room, and he was saying, man, I wouldn't get this type of opportunity elsewhere, an opportunity to learn, to go through the ups and downs. Talk about, look at Nick Saban early in his career, all the great coaches, Bill Belichick. Some of these guys struggle early. So he was grateful for the opportunity to learn, and now second half of the season, they're progressing. And knows that next year, he comes into the season as the coach with experience that's gonna be helping some of those other potential first-time coaches whether it be positional coaches or head coaches other where know how to establish yourself as the man in charge. Please. The kick from Jose Borgales is away. Shepard at the 10. Shepard to the 35-yard line. The Nine Park docuseries Player 54 continues with an all-access look at XFL players and coaches. Episode 7 premieres Wednesday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN2. All episodes are available on ESPN+. Plus. And Sam, for Terrell Buckley to keep his team engaged for this long, playing competitive football, that's impressive. It's a tale of two seasons. Early in the season, they were one of the, if yeah. not the worst team in the XFL. Then something changed. We talked about a, a play caller change, a quarterback change. Now they're one of the least penalized teams in the XFL and playing like a team that could beat anybody. McCarron back to work to Akeem Butler. Had the last touchdown. Butler to the 40-yard line. Here's Taylor. Guys, I go back to what Dan Mullen told me about Coach Buckley, the two coached together at Mississippi State with one of the most dominant defenses in college football history. He told me that Coach Buckley relates to players almost as good as anyone he's ever coached around. We know there are growing pains with simply being a head coach, but I just go back to that chemistry with players. Coach Buckley talked about it on our call yesterday. Sometimes that will win out, and I think that's what we're seeing a little bit here. Wonderful. Had one-on-one -on -one Wonderful. meetings a couple days ago with every player on his roster, and that made him walk away saying, regardless of the record, this year is a success because I helped people develop away from the field and on the field. And a lot of teams will have exit interviews, so the season ends and, and all of a sudden you meet with your coach. But he did that a week prior because he knows that this may be the end for this team. Who knows who's going to be there next year? So he met with every single player, not just to find out their why, but to say, hey, how can I help you be better for the future? So that's what you learn when you start getting experience as a coach. Back-to-back -to -back two point losses. Four losses this season by three points or less. And oh, by the way, only one team has defeated D.C. this season, and it is? It's this Orlando Guardians team. 
And you want to know who stood out in that game? It was KD Cannon, who we saw the, Seth, the big play from, and it was Jordan Thomas. Yeah, I know what going to get, right? Not bad when you got Inside, a quarterback in and Quentin Dormady that's coming play, up right? with yeah. six Fine total touchdowns. It's coming. Even if you got since we're doing that, you might want to even go at four. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to change it. I'm going to go. I'm going to go. Let's go. Bail it. Bail it. Bail it. Bail it. Hey, Brown still is cover one. Opportunity. So cover tough one. to find. If you want to be a head coach, how do you prepare for it? And to see the XFL giving four coaches an opportunity to be a head coach for the first time. And this is what we want in sports, too, ultimately. More opportunities for minorities to have power positions in sports within their team. And we're seeing that with Terrell Barkley. We're seeing it with coaches. We're seeing the opportunities for players, even referees. These are referees that the NFL has been looking at. Some of these referees have refed in college, and now it's saying, let's do it here, and now we'll get to that next level. And we have a woman on every officiating staff within the XFL. Penalty, it's fourth. Oh, yeah. So it's one Correction, thing third down. to hot, say hot. we are a league of opportunity, but this group has put their money where their mouth is. They live that. Well, it's because, look at the leadership. You talk about Dwayne Johnson. He's a former player. I talked to some players in the XFL this week. They said, man, he gets it. What other league has ownership that used to play? Look at Danny Garcia, chairwoman of the XFL. She gets opportunity as well. And so everywhere you see, it's from the top down. Leadership, providing opportunity all across the board. Third and six here for A.J. McCarron. Wait, McCarron to a wide open. Gary Jennings. Jennings move the chains. Give him a first down. 11. 11-11. 11-11. Good shit, guys. Good shit. Bunch right yak, 13 wham. Bunch right yak, 13 wham. Yak. Well, we talk a lot about what St. Louis has to do to win this game and score points, but we forget that Orlando was playing as well, and so all your plans could be great until the other team shows up on the other side. And there's nothing like facing a team that has nothing to lose. And case in point, that fake punt from Mac Brown, cheetah, cheetah, Jordan cheetah. Thomas, backed cheetah, up. Cheetah, cheetah, cheetah. Let's go empty left. That's Cheetah. not in the empty normal left. realm of what you're expecting to see. Empty left. H. Malcolm. Cheetah. Empty left. H. Malcolm. Right. H. Malcolm. I want H. Malcolm left. And the fact that Malcolm he left. even ran out on the field late, it. so that right. could have been an alert. Right. Matt Brown wasn't right. phased. He said, "I'm running it." Coach said, "Throw it. I'm gonna throw it." St. Louis start with the football first, so Orlando will get it to start the second half. Working inside, and another completion to Jennings out of West Virginia. Here you go, Cheetah, so Cheetah. Gary Jennings. Let's go, bunch left empty, on his bunch catapult. left empty. 50 Chevy, Ohio, bunch left empty. XFL players wear catapult devices that tracks their speed through GPS. Jennings, the fastest of anyone that's won. Oscar. More than a sensor this year, 22.2 miles per hour. What do you think flying. What would your speed Wait. be, Lo? I'm a solid 11. Here's McCarron. McCarron for the end zone! Brought down, no! Broken up at the last second by Najim Hossein. That was the play. And that was, you, you, you know, A.J. McCarron's been through it all, so he understands, right? Won national championships. But plays like that, you'll get more opportunities, but plays like that. Shout out to Najim Hossein, but also you want to come down with that at a critical moment. Fourth down, they're going for it. Empty left. 50 Purdue. I'll let you know. Hurry up. Fourth and three. Part of the aggressive nature. The coach Beck was telling Ohio. Fitz about off the top of the broadcast. So from the 50 to 30, fourth and three closer. This fits the math that Beck would go for it inside the 30. 
fourth and six closer. No, just, because because again, if you're just call, tuning in, in St. Louis is not just trying to win like this that. game. They, they are the chasing Omaha. Seattle in points allowed and we'll points scored better. because it could come down to a fourth tiebreaker scenario. And the benefit of a game like this is that St. Louis, fault, they're trying to, th those two points allowed and points scored are separate. So if you score more points, you could actually pass Seattle in that ranking, even if you give up less, give up more than you would hope to. And so there is a formula hey. for you to score a lot of points, even though you've given up more than the six that you would have hoped. Now the problem is Seattle yep. is averaging 24 points per game. So if they need 20 to pass Seattle, that would mean scoring 44 points in in this game, which would tie Houston for the highest scoring game in the league this season. No. That's asking a lot for St. Louis. Here's fourth and three. McCarron staying alive. McCarron had first down yardage. Did Butler bring it in? He did. First down to Keem Butler. Who do you go to when it's on the line? Well, there's so many options, actually, with the St. Louis team. Butler is the most obvious. Good job, good job. But Aitman's been clutched as we get down to the two-minute warning. Calm down, it's cool. Darius Shepard and Prohl as well. Two minutes. Let's take a look at today's game flow, brought to you by Progressive. It's special teams goodness, starting with the Blandino last week. Starting off with KD Cannon on this play. And it continued, the fearlessness to keep on running them. And then Mac Brown to Jordan Thomas. Thomas go up and get it and ran through the entire St. Louis special teams unit. They called him Bone Crusher for a reason. A big bodied receiver. Really, he's a tight end, but he plays like a receiver. And that's a quarterback who's lined up as a punter. <laughs> <laughs> Slash right there. Right. That's Cordell Stewart back in the day punter slash quarterback in this case two minutes we go to the college rules when it comes to clock stoppages clock will pauses chains are reset after first downs they will stop with incompletions and plays out of bounds McCarron low snap McCarron will keep going brought down at the 30 by Lakia Henry 10 trips left trips left 18 Wanda Sprite. Trips up, 18 Wanda Sprite. So if this eventually does come down to a tiebreaker with St. Louis and Seattle, the first half has been a win for the Sea Dragons. Butler, wide open. Butler, did he lose the football and get it back? Down to the five. He did. He looks like he almost hey, lost it twice. Well, you know, so he grew up with the Harrison twins, right? Those Kentucky basketball stars. So it looked like he caught it, he dribbled it, and then he <laughs> picked it back up. That was a great hit by the defender. Catch, obvious catch. Ball oh gets my. punched out by Matt Elon, the former first-round pick from the Baltimore Ravens. But he recovers the football. That's that basketball awareness as well. And also being cool under pressure. Wow, sometimes you hear that phrase. And that's Matt Elam was injured, but is coming off the field. Sometimes we don't get the bounces. Well, sometimes you do get the bounces. They would always say in basketball, hey, man, the ball chose me. The ball found me. The ball found Akeem Butler in that situation. Ball don't lie. So a first and goal from the five-yard line. And St. Louis needs to just channel the mentality of making this a track race. They got to score as many points as they can. They want a shot in this tiebreaker scenario. Final spot in the north coming down to Seattle and St. Louis. Regardless of the outcome here, a Seattle loss Sunday against Vegas sends the Battle Hawks to the playoffs. What is What's that? That's a nice play call, Jake Sutherland, end zone!
So one of the hardest things to do as a defender is to cover someone in space who's crossing from the other side of the line of scrimmage. Your eyes have to be great. If your eyes aren't great, then someone's going to get lost. And what happened was Jake Sutherland, the tight end, essentially had the defense get lost in coverage. That's how, why he was so wide open. And that play moves St. Louis past Seattle in terms of points scored this season. They need to keep padding that number because Seattle will know the magic number that they have to match or exceed yeah. on Sunday. Here's a two-point attempt. Set. Hey, bring, bring, bring. And this is Wait. all McCarron at the line. Wait, McCarron to Butler. Butler looking for a block. Did he get it? He's just a large shielding bing. He don't need the block. I don't care if it's football, basketball, hockey. Hakeem Butler can do it all. And that was a play more about Will. You talk about it, man. You make the first man miss. Then you make the second guy miss. And then you do everything you can to get the ball into the end zone. Right. Miss right there. Stiff arm. Miss right there. Then you reach. Use your six-foot, six frame, your long arms. Get that ball in there. Hakeem Butler is that guy. Hard to believe only two targets last week. Butler coming back strong, one of the top threats in the XFL. Two teams are already in. D.C. will host in the north. Houston will host in the south. Playoffs start next week. In the north, final spot is down to St. Louis and Seattle. St. Louis win against the Sea Dragons last week in this building. Would have sent St. Louis to the playoffs. That did not happen. In the south, if Arlington wins, the Renegades go. If Arlington loses and San Antonio wins, Brahmas win that tiebreaker, and the Brahmas are in the playoffs. Did you get all that, Sam? That's a lot to get, but I think I got it. <laughs> <laughs> it's just fascinating because every point will matter up until the final point scored Sunday night with Vegas and Seattle. And with 25 points for St. Louis, the most they've scored in the first half this season. Week 10 in the XFL continues with the Defenders and the Brahmas at 3 Eastern over on ABC. And tomorrow, the Renegades host the Roughnecks at 3 Eastern on ESPN with the Vipers and Sea Dragons at 7 on ESPN2. Every game is also available on ESPN+. And this is the game within the game. If it comes down to a fourth tiebreaker, it will be the combined divisional rank of scoring offense and scoring defense between St. Louis and Seattle. St. Louis trails Seattle in both of those categories. It's a sizable deficit to start the game in scoring opposite offense. It was more manageable with scoring defense. But the 20 allowed seriously hurt St. Louis chances. They need a shutout from here on out. Cody Lattimore, his first reception of the day. Let's check in with Ian. St. Louis came into this game low as a nine-point favorite, total 48. So if you have the over in this game at 25 to 20, total of 45 points, you're feeling kind of frisky. <laughs> I love it. Teams favored by seven-plus this season. One in five against the spread. Charleston Rambo. Another large gain for Orlando, 26 yards. Did you see that pass by Quentin Dormady? <laughs> In between two defenders. Twins talk about right, why Orlando's been so right, good. Inside That's why. pin, X and Z stop. It has to be thrown in the end zone. In the end zone or out of bounds. End zone or out of bounds, you can't take a sack. 10 seconds. This is a crucial stand for St. Louis. Dormady. No one there. Good job. That's a smart play. You heard Shane Matthew. You hear him say, good job. Smart play. Why? No more timeouts. The ball's got to either be out of bounds or in the end zone. Last, a few weeks ago, there was a sack, and that sack caused Orlando to lose the game. They could have won. But going back to this play by Quentin Dormady, I mean, look at the precision of this pass. This is a cover two, so you have a player underneath and a safety over top trying to get to that edge. A perfect pass beats any kind of coverage. There's Jose, Jose Borgales. He's made six straight. This kick, they've got a flag. 
This kick goes back. I have a fall. 78. 78. 78. Hold up. False start. What'd you have? 78. False, False start. Number 78. Offense, five yard penalty. Still second down. These points so critical for St. Louis. Ultimately, a field goal doesn't give Orlando the lead. However, every point allowed is a potential backbreaker when they're trying to close the gap on the Seattle defense. 51 yards for Borgales, the former Lou Groza Award winner at Miami. And a whistle. And a timeout. Prior to the snap, St. Louis has called their third and final charge timeout. So Anthony Beck trying to ice Borgales. That's how big this kick potentially is. The nine-part docuseries Player 54 continues with an all-access look at XFL players and coaches. Episode 7 premieres Wednesday at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific on ESPN2. All episodes are available on ESPN+. Plus. And Lowell, to your point about the points, it's not just these two teams competing. I say these two teams, I mean St. Louis and Seattle competing for the points. It's where do they rank in their division, the XFL North? Where do they rank against D.C. and Vegas? And then if that tiebreaker isn't sufficient, where do they rank in the entire XFL? And so they're not they're competing against the teams that are going to play after this game as well. Tough to see anyone in their division passing them. But there are more teams in between them in the XFL overall if it comes down to a fifth tiebreaker. 51 yarder is up, and it is no good. That is a win, not just in this moment, but for the Battle Hawks to potentially make the postseason. That's a huge win, and we sell you could celebrate a field goal being missed. But at halftime, what will Anthony Beck tell his team? Yes, you want to win, but this game is different. How do you win? You're proud of how you played. You got to cut down the scores on defense and then try and get some more on offense. That total's looking really good at 48 if you took the over, because we got 45 combined on the board. Are we saving the best for last here in the XFL regular season? I like it. St. Louis up by five. Welcome back to St. Louis, home of the Battle Hawks, playing for their playoff hopes, trying to keep those dreams alive. Right now, Orlando is giving them everything they can handle and even more. It's a 25-20 lead for St. Louis. That brings us to our first half stats, brought to you by Progressive Total Yards. The slight edge going to Orlando and in there, Part of that special teams goodness yet again, Mac Brown with the touchdown to Jordan Thomas, switching everything up and throwing this game upside down. Lowell Galindo here with Sam Ocho. We know there's so much on the line for St. Louis. The easiest way for them to get in the playoffs is for Seattle to lose. But if that doesn't happen and both the Sea Dragons and Battle Hawks win, they need to make up ground. The game within the game, St. Louis and Seattle, not just Orlando, there's a lot going on here. But even deeper than that, Lowell, there was this piece about players finally getting an opportunity. I talked with Jacoby Jones, a defensive end for the Orlando Guardians before the game. He said, man, if it weren't for the XFL, I don't know what I would be doing right now. And so I think that's why you see some of these players playing so hard and also playing so free. It's because this is the best version of football. There's no politics. You get to play because you love the game. And no matter what your record is, you get a chance to find a way to win for your teammates, for, your, for the fans, and for your family and as the XFL has now done for 10 straight weeks providing us unforgettable moments and access let's take an inside look on the feds today anything good you got to say let me know just call everything you see that goes in our favor <laughs> have y'all ever went to an elementary school and read to little kids that's how easy this is Come on, come on, baby. Come on. Playmaker, 
Hold on, Sam. <laughs> Did we just see a quarterback take a hit and his offensive lineman say, I'm sorry? Well, it was more than that. It was an elementary school piece for me. I've got little kids. I've gone to read them. It's hard. It's upside down sometimes like yeah. to read. To yeah. So it's not as easy for Katie Cannon. It might be easy for him. Maybe not for me. Hey, but he's making the big plays look easy. <laughs> Orlando right now, your point in this first half is they're getting some of the bounces to go their way. They are, and they're playing free. You see fake punts. You see big plays. You see balls that could have been recovered by the other team yet they fall on it and so there's a freedom that this Orlando Guardians team is playing with and we've seen it the last four weeks even from the week before they beat DC the best team in the league they're playing free they're having fun and like Terrell Buckley said they're following the Guardian way looked like maybe St. Louis was a little tight at the beginning of the game seems like they've loosened up as well as the game has progressed they have and sometimes it goes back to who are the leaders on your team you heard Travis Feeney say hey man like hey, I'm the feds he's joking around right I got my microphone and so if anybody talks they're gonna catch it but also the piece of AJ McCarron he's calm he's got experience he won three national championships in college started two of them and so Yes, coaches and numbers and stats, but the players are the ones who are on the field with the opportunity to change the trajectory of this season and their careers. The fans have been electric in St. Louis as they have all season long. It's been loud for a man fits down on the sidelines. Anthony Beck, head coach of St. Louis, delivered a very firm and stern message. No more points, and then offensively, keep doing what you're doing. Leroy Glover, defensive assistant coach for the D-line, also delivered a very firm message. We cannot beat ourselves and just go execute. Other than that, I can't repeat anything else I heard in the St. Louis locker room. <laughs> Thank you for the insights, Ian Fitzsimmons. Second half, here we go. Dedrick Thomas with the return. Orlando will start with the football after St. Louis decided to take the ball to try to get some momentum early on. Keep doing what you're doing. All right, take advantage of every single snap. You're going to get the opportunity to be aggressive. Defense, not bad out there. Get off the field on third down. All right, no more points for them. All right, no more points. Shut them down. Let's go. That is a man that is fired up. Anthony Beck has done a heck of a job. It's his first season as a head coach. St. Louis came into the season as one of the preseason favorites to win it all. Well, they have so much talent. Even two of the players on this Orlando Guardians roster, one of them being Jordan Thomas, played for this St. Louis team. And that is Devin Darrington getting the carry. Darrington, solid first half. Had 133 yards rushing last week in San Antonio. The second best in the league this season. And I could see Orlando getting back to that running attack, getting the ball in Devin Darrington's hands early in the second half to calm everything down. Second and five. DeAndre Francois started at quarterback. Back to Quentin Dormady. Dormady goes down. Carson Wells with the stop. Wipe me down. There was nowhere to go from Carson Wells on the left side, pushing the pocket, collapsing the pocket, to Travis Feeney on the right side. LaCale London on the inside. That's called four people rushing as one. There's nowhere for the quarterback to escape. Coverage was great on the back side. And then Carson Wells finishes with the sack. A shutout in the second half is vital for St. Louis. That message relayed from Anthony Beck through Ian Fitzsimmons to us. Dormady's just going to flip it to Darrington. Darrington spinning out of one tackle. And three battle hogs there to bring him down. That will force a punt. High alert with the punt situation coming up. Well, they talk about having a few fakes up. They even put a new punt fake in not too long ago. And so you have to be on alert. But you also have to trust your technique and your preparation. If there are different people out there, you're St. Louis, you're saying, hey, we got we to make sure that there is not a fake coming out. Remember, Matt Brown wasn't even the starting punter to begin the season for Orlando. That was Johnny Townsend who ended up getting hurt early in the season to open the door for Matt Brown out of Ole Miss. What do we have here? Oh, it's just a punt? Come on. There is a flag. Stephen Mitchell off the hop to the 30. 
Looking for the sideline and tackled shy of the 40 by Matt Brown. Oh, they're going at the punter. He is living rent free inside the Battle Hawks dome. Yeah, go slow here. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, here's the punch. This shift. right here. Yeah, illegal shift on the one. Okay. Yeah. So, so we got a legal shift because they're not set, and we saw that he was okay. never set. That's the first one. And then we're gonna have something different. So we know we have Orlando up front. So hold on, talk, yep. talk it through. Yep. So who's your foul on? Blue 33. He's a receiving yeah. team. Yeah. Okay. So you said that. Okay. So no late hit out of bounds. No lead hit up. They don't no, have a okay. lead hit So you said it was in play, so you're talking something after they the play with a chip born, shot. Which is fine. Okay, so you're going dead ball. So we got the live ball and a dead ball there. But is it still, so you're in too? What do you have? There's a there's a third foul. So there's no foul there. So we're going with 38. All right, so 33. Okay, dead ball. That's going to be declined by rule. And then we're going 15 yards back that way after the play's over. Okay. Wait. Mike, so Mike, 30, slow down. So Let's talk about the okay. enforcement. You've got you've got a illegal illegal shift on the kicking team, correct? Yes, then correct. And we have a change of possession, and then we've got a dead ball on the receiving team, correct? Yes. So then, so we've got a double with St. Louis can keep it and have yep. their ball and their 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 foul and force. But since we have a kicking play, yep. they can elect to re-kick. They have that option. Yep. Yep. We're t we're talking through that right okay. now. Okay. Great. Wait, each team. Yeah, he said a late hit. On them. And then they were illegal yeah. motion. So here's it's double width, right? What? So so this is what we have. You have the option we can we can offset both of these here and replay fourth. And then we've got a late hit by your guys, which that could be enforced with your ball. Wait, our punt hey, return. Mike, Mike, it's, it's, it's a re-kick, it's an offset yeah. re-kick or Correct. 15 from he's, the he's dead ball spot. Correct. Correct. He's the ball returner. You want to offset and re kick? Yes. Okay. So we got 33 and then. Hey! Hey! Take 33. 33 blue and then an illegal shift by the offense. Pump return! Pump return! Okay. Yeah, so 22. Two, two. two fouls on the play, both by each team. Illegal shift. Kicking team. Dead ball. Personal foul on the receiving team. Those fouls will offset and we'll replay fourth down. So that's an inside look of what happens with the communication from the XFL's VP of Rules and Officiating, Dean Blandino. He has the constant communication with his officiating staff as well. All four sites every weekend. And the bottom line is it's put into place this system go. so you ultimately get the calls right. At the end of the day, we talk about it. You want, you want it to be correct. So if you have an opportunity to go and look and say, this is what should happen, then, then make the correct call. In other leagues, the NFL, college football, they're looking at these types of rules innovations and saying, maybe we should implement these types of rules as well. Each team also has one challenge. You see that red dash below the timeouts. You can challenge anything. However, you need a timeout remaining to call a challenge. Mac Brown will punt again. Expected St. Louis to bring a little more pressure throughout the day on these punts. Haven't really had too much of an opportunity. As that is Mitchell trying to turn the corner. And is brought down at the 32-yard line. Third quarter, St. Louis with a five-point lead. Trying to slab of ribs by the Food Network. And yes, sold out. And Sam, through my travels, I've learned there's one good way to pick a fight. If you say another city's barbecue is better than the city you're in, that's destined to lead to a brawl. I'll okay. just say this, I've had St. Louis barbecue, it's fantastic. You're trying to avoid a brawl after this, huh? You know it, baby. There's A.J. McCarron wide open to Keen Butler to plus territory. 22 yards hey, for Keen Butler. I'm from Louisiana. He's his best for last. I live in Texas. And let me tell you something. Watching that, eight catches, coach, 98 yards on the day for the Iowa State Cyclone. Sometimes when you're a type of player that can build the momentum, 
just keep on feeding me, and then he'll open it up for other people. And so you're going to see Akeem Butler get more targets, but watch out for Marcel Aitman as well. McCarron wheeling and dealing. Shepard slips through one. Shepard brought down at the 35-yard line. So interesting in, in a league hey, that right promoted Martavis Bryant, left. Josh Gordon at receiver. Don't get me wrong, Gordon's been really good, but it's been the emerging Kick threats. Jacor Pearson in Seattle, Darius Shepard in St. Louis, they've been more of the story of the Money. league. Whiteson. Back to Kareem Walker. Walker full head of steam. He's about a yard and a half shy of the first down. 300 jet and you almost Z smoke pump Hakeem stuttering hit the sideline bump right tight action 300 jet Z smoke pump so telling Hakeem Butler stutter and hit the sideline there's a stutter there's a sideline but McCarron was pressured flag down McCarron's got the first down and a flag down at the 15 yeah. and the 30. Got hey, stay there. Got we have two fouls. We have yeah. two fouls. Uh, yeah, hang on a minute. Dean, can you look at the back in 61? Was there enough engagement there on the left guard for a high-low? I'm, I'm looking. I'm looking. Illegal contact on the defense, number 23, and I've got a potential chop with zero and 61 there. No, I'm good. Yeah, you're you're okay. There's enough There's enough okay. engagement. Yeah. yeah. So there's two fouls. We're going to offset this. 23 is on chop yours. Block. That's what they have. Okay. There are two fouls on the play, both by each team. They're engaged. One, Illegal one, contact, one. number 23. Defense, personal foul, chop block, number zero and number 61. Offense, those fouls will offset, will replay. Second down. Ha ha. The beauty of this Pirate. league, Lowell, cover one is that Brown piece Rangers about cover one. Brown Rangers cover one communicating, 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 and then getting the call right. And that was a play call from Tony Carter, former All-ACC DB at Florida State, defensive coordinator for the Guardians. Second and one. Walker almost breaks out of a tackle from Ty Smith, thinking a house call, but gets a first down. Again, this is the St. Louis team playing without the league's second leading rusher, Brian Hill. He's out for personal reasons. And it's been a pass-happy approach. I mean, McCarron is putting together one of the most prolific passing games we've seen all season long. This is who he's been all season, outside of last week coming out of that injury. But he's been precise. I mean, I don't know if he's on the level of Mac Brown or Sterling Hoffrick, but pretty good. Hey, we're good. We're good. Here we go. Three national championships Set. at Alabama. Two as the starter at quarterback. Whitey! Walker. Why trade to trips right? right? Why trade to trips right, Jihad? Why trade to trips right, Jihad? Let's go! Bruce Gronkowski looking for a little more intensity with his offense. Urgency. It's the name of the game for St. Louis. They need a win, and they need to make up ground on Seattle. And points scored and points allowed. Play action. McCarron in zone. What a catch! Steven Mitchell. Sports Center top 10. You heard the communication right before the snap. AJ McCarron talking to Stevie Mitchell, and he gets him on the same page, rolls out to the right, knows the pressure is coming, and lays it out away from the defender. And Stevie Mitchell makes the play right before AJ Karen told him, go make it for me. That is a former NFL quarterback with an NFL throw to a former NFL receiver making an NFL catch. Steven Mitchell with 10 games in his NFL career, last played in 2020 with the Texans. Two-point attempt here for St. Louis. All sorts of time for McCarron. 
Directing traffic back to the end zone. Tight window. Two more points. It's that man again. Stephen Mitchell times two. Twenty-two with the back-to-back -back touchdown and the two-point conversion. Two-two for two. You see AJ McCarron make the check to Stevie Mitchell. Feels the pressure. Knows it's going to be one-on-one. -on -one. Rolls out. Gets the ball into the end zone. Stevie Mitchell gets the ball at the highest point and outduels the defender. And then he follows it up with a two for two by twenty-two. AJ McCarron, Stevie Mitchell putting points on the board. Nine thirty-two to go in the third quarter. St. Louis now leads Orlando thirty-three to twenty. How much does point differential and tiebreakers come into decision making right now, Coach Beck? Well, yeah, you know we've been aggressive the whole game. I mean, we're having fun right now. This is a point in point in the game for us. Great try by our offense. We had a stop on defense. This is where you can kind of maybe get one from them on the defensive side. It's a huge opportunity for our defense here. So every time we get the ball, we really haven't been stopped offensively. We got to keep it going. A lot of time left. Clock's in our favor. Guys have momentum. We got to keep scoring. Go. Oh. Right. Thank you. So if both Seattle and St. Louis win this weekend, it's going to come down to a fourth or fifth tiebreaker to determine who goes to the XFL playoffs. This is Dedrick Thomas. There's a flag down. Thomas keeps going north of the 35. Holding 65 Orlando during the return. I had that same one. Wow, it was that much in the open. Hey, where do we want to enforce that from? We want to go from the 24 or the big line? Big line good? 25? 25-yard line's fine. It's a five, it's a 10-yard foul. Yeah. 65, we said yes. 65, yes, sir. 65. During the return, holding number 65, receiving team, 10-yard penalty. It's first down. So the fourth tiebreaker would be your combined rank in scoring offense and defense in the division. Currently, Seattle, coming into the week, leads in both. St. Louis would need to match them in both of those categories or pass them in one of them to force a fifth tiebreaker, where Seattle would still have the edge. If they pass them in both, St. Louis would go. Quick Dormany, quick pass behind Cody Lattimore. Here's the deal, though, because... Seattle plays last, so they will know the magic number. And this is why we're on the fourth tiebreaker. The head-to-head, -head, the team split. First one was very close. St. Louis winning in Seattle. Winning percentage in division games are both three and three. And the combined record of the teams they defeated, it's the same record. So that brings us to the fourth tiebreaker. I know it's convoluted. But it will make sense at the end of the weekend. First down from Dormady to Cody right. Lattimore. Twins now right. that is if Scat both right. teams y win. Five. If Seattle five. loses, this game is irrelevant. 81. If Seattle loses, St. Louis will go to the XFL playoffs. Did you get all that? Dormady again locking in on Cody Lattimore, the former second round pick by the Denver Broncos, second leading receiver in the XFL. Fitz. I'm going to call Matt Damon and see if I can channel Goodwill Hunting to try and figure all that stuff out that you're talking about, brother. We need a chalkboard. I mean, a mathematician, please. Lord have mercy. So here, it comes down to this. Seattle, as it stands right now, needs to score more than 14 points against Vegas and allow less than 26. Fits, those are both doable numbers. And if Seattle does that, they advance if both teams win. Lola, it took me six and a half years to get out of undergrad at Alabama. You're yeah. making my head hurt, but God bless you. Hey, I'm making my head hurt. <laughs> you can feel now. Lowell and Fitz, the crowd get involved into this game. They understand how critical of a moment this is. Third and three. Dormady into traffic. It is brought Dose in right. by Jalen right. Smith, Dose another right. Right. former battle hawk Double for smash. the first down. Double smash. 
Actually, we go heard lefty. From... Tell Jalen go lefty. <laughs> My God. Lefty. Lefty. <laughs> Is that possible? My guy is drinking a beer through a Hawks mask. I don't know how that's possible, but I love that guy. Dormany, quick strike. Dan Williams. Yeah, Decent yeah. gain on KDM. first down. Yeah. I wanted yeah, the math on right. that. I'm the guy with right. the battle hawk. Inside pin. That's got to add to your X total in some way. Play calls coming in from Shane Matthews, one of Steve Spurrier's former gunslingers at Florida. There he is. St. Louis cannot surrender more points. Dormady engulfed by the Battle Hawks defense. Give the sack to Ellum Lamore. That's back-to-back -back weeks for Ellen Lamore with the sack. Started off the season strong, got injured, but we talked about it. Four rushing as one. You see all the guys, even back to Jalen Robinson. He's the cover guy. He's the one who's making sure the quarterback doesn't escape. Three of the defenders all collapsing the pocket. One guy spying on the quarterback. That's called a unit, a defense playing as one body. Western Illinois, Eric Hansen from Upper Iowa, also there. Sometimes, though, you can take the game into your own hands. Lakel London is, is a big body. He's 335 pounds. They lined him up on the outside to use his power. And then Eric Hansen on the inside, he loops around. And so it doesn't matter who on this defense is getting the pressure, but all four guys on the front, even the rotation, guys are getting it. And you can feel the magnitude of every snap. It's going to be like this. Three we hit zeros in the last game of the weekend with Seattle and Vegas. Urgency, urgency, Sam. Because this is week 10 of the XFL, final week of the regular season, and it continues with the Defenders and the Brahmas at 3 Eastern over on ABC. And tomorrow, the Renegades host the Roughnecks at 3 Eastern on ESPN, with the Vipers and Sea Dragons at 7 on ESPN2. Every game is also available on ESPN+. Plus. Arlington with the win, they are in. If Arlington loses and San Antonio wins, the Brahmas go into the XFL playoffs. And with the Seattle loss, that at the moment looks like St. Louis's best shot to go. A Seattle loss, regardless of what happens here, sends the Battle Hawks to the playoffs. But both St. Louis and Seattle, two of the biggest favorites this weekend that we've seen all season long. How tough is it to play when you are that heavily favored? Well, it's more probably tougher to coach. As a player, you're saying, hey, I'm looking at my matchup, whether I'm a defensive end looking at the offensive tackle or if I'm a safety reading what the quarterback does. You focus on your matchup. But as a coach, you start looking at the numbers. You start thinking about the momentum that you may or may not have. It does get difficult. So you have to channel your emotions and just do what you've done all season long. Momentum Set. squarely residing on the shoulders of the Battle Hawks. They have scored touchdowns on four Ready. straight possessions. A.J. McCarron unconscious. McCarron into the hands of Butler. Case and Blunt. Butler, you're not going to catch me. Let's go, baby. You want to know why this league is so great for so many players? Hakeem Butler was a fourth round pick in the NFL, had a great opportunity, great college career. He broke his hand in training camp. All of a sudden, you lose the opportunity, but here you're showing, I'm healthy, I'm here, I'm ready, I'm still scoring. 66 yards later, Hakeem Butler 
touchdown. Run up them points, baby. And how about Marcel Aitman, who was supposed to be the go-to receiver of the St. Louis offense. He's dealt with a hammy injury for a long part of this season. He had the key block. He had the key block, and that's a team being a team. I've known Marcel Aitman for over a few years now. He's the ultimate teammate, whether he did it in college, whether he does it off the field with his family. Hey, hey, He's the hey, ultimate hey, teammate. Do that's it. the stuff that don't doesn't do show up in a scoreboard, how you block. Yep, I'm going to look at my left 25. He's engaged at this point. Feet are moving. He continues. I'm going to go to the high end zone next. So I've got three engaged. I'm looking. I don't see. I see something hooked. But I see he keeps his feet moving. I want to look at one more, one more shot. I'm going to look at my all 22 to see if there's any restriction. Feet are moving, keeps going. Okay. After review, Mike, there's just not enough restriction there. Keeps his feet moving, not enough to say holding. Ruling on the field stands. So this is a challenge by Orlando when you challenge. To review the ruling of a hold. There is no foul. It's a touchdown. Orlando loses their challenges for the remainder of the game and is charged the timeout. You must specify what part of the play you are challenging. You cannot make a blanket challenge, but I can't blame Terrell Buckley in this moment for looking for something. It's a big moment. You want to use your challenge. You can't take it home with you. You call your timeout. You say specifically, I think that number three was holding, and if you see it, then it gets called. If the Dean Blandino doesn't see it, doesn't get called. But that's the stuff that matters more than anything. NFL coaches are watching this tape and saying who makes the big plays, who also does the little things. Little things done well make big things happen. 164 through the year for Bowler. Tops in the XFL this season. Best for last. Week 10 here in St. Louis. Eight men can't make the catch. McCarron feeling pressure. It has been tough to rattle A.J. McCarron. Seattle did it last week, but he's been unflappable here today. A.J. McCarron has been not only the consummate pro, but the example of what this opportunity provides. Could have been a backup in the NFL. He said, no, I want to play so my kids can watch me play. And oh, by the way, because I'm going to be great, I'm going to have all of those around me be great. Stevie Mitchell, Marcel Aitman, Darius Shepard, every single, and Akeem Butler, every one of my players, I'm going to give them an opportunity as well. And it's playoff intensity from a guy that's experienced it. He's played at the highest level at Alabama. College football playoffs won two national titles as a starter, three overall. While at Alabama, job, this is baby. a playoff atmosphere, and it feels that way inside the dome. You cannot escape the magnitude. It's so intriguing in a way that's only can be done in the XFL, the game within the game. St. Louis trying to win this while they make up ground on Seattle and the tiebreaker scenario. Thomas to the 30 yard line. And you know what this does? This puts more pressure on Seattle. Seattle came into this game watching, saying, well, we're good. You know, we're up by 19 in points and six in points against. But now all of a sudden, you, you might feel that pressure as a player. You might want to force a few more throws tomorrow. You might want to score more points tomorrow. And so by playing the way the game, the way you need to play it in, in this game, you're putting pressure on an opponent that is sitting at home watching. So if both team wins, the magic numbers for Seattle, they need to score more than 20 points, which is below pretty much their season scoring average and allow less than 26. DeAndre Francois back at quarterback. He got his first career start here today. Bullet pass, Charleston Rambo, excuse me, KD Cannon with the grab. You're seeing them get back into that quarterback chain. Cyril Buckley talked about, I'm gonna give both quarterbacks an opportunity and now we're going to see if Francois will either use his legs or use his arm to come back and win this game. It has to be shutout football for St. Louis the rest of the way. 
That was a message from Beck at the half. Francois on skates. Get the first down. Breaking ankles is DeAndre Francois. So Seattle averaging 24 points per game when we talk about that magic number for them. And, and that's the piece, too, that matters a lot more than we're giving it credit for. Seattle came into this game knowing, OK, if we win, we're probably going to be in. But now you saw St. Louis score more than they've scored in a half all season. It's still three minutes left in the third quarter, and they're just getting started. You've got an offense in Seattle that scores a lot, but that does turn the ball over a lot. If you start forcing it in that game, now you could put your defense at detriment. Seattle still does have a huge advantage because of the 20 points allowed by St. Louis in this game. That would be critical if it comes down to a fifth tiebreaker, which is the overall rank in scoring offense and defense among all teams in the XFL. There are more teams between Seattle and St. Louis in the overall rankings. When it's just the division, they are back to back. You can almost feel the, the, the pressure of the moment for both teams in this scenario. St. Louis knowing what needs to be stopped. Orlando saying what we can do to end it. Second and five. French wall, hit, dropped. Lamar does it again. I'll say this. When Elam Lamore is healthy, and he has been these last few weeks, he is a game wrecker. He's at the top of your screen. He simply just does a club and a rip. All you do, you see the offensive lineman's outside hand. You hit it down, which turns your hips around. Then you rip your arm through. It's one of the most basic pass rush moves in the book. But when you perfect it, it can be nearly unstoppable. Finished his career at Towson. Started it at Rutgers, where he led the Scarlet Knights in sacks in three straight years. He's got two here today. Third down, pitch and catch to Dan Williams. It's close. Ruling on the field is completed pass short of the line to gain. It's fourth down. Go for it, Tom, here for the Guardians. This play was under review. It was determined that the receiver made the line to gain. It's first down. 43. 43. 43 yard line. So here's the benefit. Yep, we're going to move the ball to the 43. First, down. first and 10. 43 yard line. Here's your, move it a half. There's your progress yep, spell go. right there. Good. You can see here contact, and he's right on the 43. Maintains control, completes the catch. So, Dean, that's something you're looking at immediately, correct? Absolutely, yeah. Line of gain, scoring plays, catch no catch. That's all from the command center. We saw that the line of gain was made at the 43. Thank you, Dean. Sarah, Sarah. Francois on first down. Hit as he throws. Sounds high. Oh, the gimme. It was there for Lucas Dennis. So I don't know if y'all saw what I saw, but number 96, LaCale London, just ran through the offensive guard. I'm not going to say his name. Give the man some grace. But I will say this. Lucas Dennis, ah! Dennis has a pick on the season. <laughs> <laughs> he had a high goal, a lofty goal. But remember last hey, time, you miss a play, you make a play. Fundamentals, technique, fall into your lap. There's Darrington working left side and brought down in a hurry. Good pursuit by Carson Wells. You gonna keep letting him hit me like that? Yeah, it sounded painful. I can only imagine how it actually felt. Fourth quarter time. Will this be the final quarter of football for the St. Louis Battlehawks? 
They're fighting to make sure that is not the case. 39-20, but they need a shutout here the rest of the way. The four in attendance today here inside the Dome and America Center. Every game inside the Dome, more than 33,000, the five biggest crowds in the XFL. To the city of St. Louis, thank you. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for embracing your team, embracing the lead, being loud. You deserve football. This city deserves football, and the XFL has delivered. Third and eight. France, whoa, that's gonna be short. Two yards shy. Another no-brainer fourth down coming up for the Guardians. And Lowell, you talk about the city of St. Louis, but really every city we, in the XFL, we've been a part of these crowds, these fans. I gotta pay homage to them because they're showing up for their team, for their city, for these players, and it means something. Different here, the fact that football has been taken away. XFL bringing it back. Fourth and two. Francois will stay up. First down yardage and tripped up by the turf monster. But DeAndre Francois gets the job done with a 10-yard pickup on fourth. That's the difference when you have a quarterback who can use his legs. As soon as it's not there, immediately he gets his head down and starts to go. And if it weren't for that turf monster, which you know you can get up and keep going unless you're touched, it would have been a turnover on downs. Inside the 30, St. Louis needs a takeaway right now. Thought they had one, slipped through the hands of Lucas Dennis. They cannot allow points if they want a shot in the tiebreaker scenario. Francois, big off, they got it! Dennis isn't dropping this one, he's back up! Cutting back! If at first you don't succeed, pick it off the second time! The ball does not lie. <laughs> Lucas Dennis was working corporate jobs in Boston before this. One of the smartest dudes, went to the number four business school. This dude missed a play, but then sometimes you just trust your technique and you will make a play. He had a lofty goal. He wanted 10 picks on the season. He's dropped a, dropped a few. Now he's got it. Boston College Ball Hawks, Brandon Ooh. Sebastian and Lucas Dennis, both with interceptions. Set. Wait, 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 wait. McCarron to follow. Durant. Durant to the sideline. Spinning, staying up to the 30. Give him 28 yards. The NFL draft begins Thursday, and we'll have every pick once again on ESPN, along with our usual expert analysis. It's also available on the NFL Network, and ABC's coverage focuses on the prospect's journey to the draft. All three days are also live on ESPN Deportes, ESPN Radio, and the ESPN app. Durant carrying the load with no Brian Hill, and he wants all the contact. Fitz. Thanks, Lowe. Lucas, you're working at Daily and Associates as a financial advisor, and here you are grabbing picks in the XFL. Sir. You know, I, I just saw, you know, the ball come up in the air. I had an opportunity last uh, last play, didn't make it, and I owed my team that one. What's it mean not working that 9-5 to five and being out here with the boys? Uh, honestly, this, honestly, the best thing I could have dreamed of. Uh, just playing football again is the best opportunity. And there we go. There we go. Well, Shepard inside the five. And Sam, we can't sum up how significant that interception was because points matter in the chase with Seattle, and they took at least three off the board. And even psychologically, sometimes if you mess up or you make a mistake, some players go down in the dumps. He said, no, forget about it. Next play. When he was doing that job in Boston, hey, all he hey, would do was watch hey, football. And so he said, I can't hey, wait for this opportunity. No, stop! 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 Set! 
McCarron, the master at the line of scrimmage. McCarron for Butler, overthrown. That's the guy you want to go to. Nine catches, 164. McCarron with 350 through the air. Second most in the NX XFL this season. Unreal. Shepard, back shoulder, like a loaf of bread, pour it on. So when he was at North Dakota State, he came back and ran routes for Trey Lance's pro day. And Darius Shepard actually was a little bit upset with Trey Lance for saying, man, you got to write down exactly what the yardage mark marks are, where the sticks are for every single route, the precision of this route, the timing of the route, the perfectly placed ball, then the ability to bring it back in. That's why he's a three-time FCS national champion. St. Louis, no no a week seven. after having their lowest offensive output of the season, they have their best with 45 and still plenty of time to add. Two point attempt. 180! Wait, Slant! Off the hands, we have a flag. It went from Gary Jennings and almost flag ended down. up in the midst of Aitman. Uh, he, he was he, 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 he was blocked. He was screened out. He was screened out. He was screened out. No foul. He, no, no foul no. for offensive pass interference. Yes. No foul for offensive pass interference. There is no foul on the play. The try is no good. Timeout on the field. There is Shepard. Turn his head. And there was a football there. One hand. Check that out. 45 on the board for the Battle Hawks. Hey, it was Begins April 27th on ESPN and ABC. Looking forward to that getting underway on Thursday. So much intrigue with the quarterbacks. I want to see where Will Anderson ends up and how he harasses quarterbacks in the NFL. I want to see where Jackson Smith and Jigba ends up. He's that receiver from Ohio State who played with Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave and oftentimes outproduced them in college. And so he's going to be a very high draft pick. This all fits in, too, with the XFL fabric. It's the first time a spring league has really worked hand in hand with the NFL when it comes to rules, innovations, and also embracing the fact that these players are looking for opportunities to play in the NFL. Fitz. Lowell, talking to several scouts and NFL GMs and preparing for the NFL draft, which I'll be a part of with Mike Tannenbaum, Chris Canty, and Chris Carlin on ESPN Radio, not one but two NFL general managers brought up the name Darius Shepard to me. You talk about a league of opportunity. Not only are they getting ready and scouting college players and other teams, but also this league, Shepard, again, not one but two NFL GMs brought him up as a returner. Great point, Fitz. We're also going to have late round selections that for whatever reason may not stick as Dormady finds Jamil that could immediately end up in the XFL. And one thing about the timing of this league is that as soon as this league ends, teams are allowed to contact XFL players. They may not be able to sign until May. Got to get through the draft and that first part of the offseason team activities. But this is a perfectly timed season. Season ends, draft begins, find your NFL needs. Stormity into traffic, back to Jamil. Jamil's getting his shot to show what he's made of because for some of these players, even if you're not going to get an invite to an NFL camp, you're trying to get invited back to your team. Each XFL franchise will retain the rights to their players, but there is going to be roster movement in the offseason. There's Jordan Thomas with a gain of about eight. And you listen to some of the players as you talk to them, 
a lot of them want to go to the NFL, but some of them love this league. They love being able to play in this environment with these players and to still have an opportunity to play. And so some have been to the NFL, want to get there. Some haven't. Some That's their goal. But the goal of this league is to make this the destination where everyone wants to go. We think about A.J. McCarron. He's made his money with a long career in the NFL as a backup. He's secure in that area. Now he gets to play. That's something I've never thought of really. These backup quarterbacks, it's a great job. They're competitors, and they don't get to play. Here they do. And he said he's not done yet. No matter what happens at the end of this game, whether they make it or not, really at the end of tomorrow's game with Seattle, he said he's not done playing football, whether that's here in the XFL or like likely, which it may be, NFL scouts watching this saying, man, maybe this guy deserves a shot to start in the NFL, yeah. not just be a backup in the NFL. We saw it. The last version of the XFL in 2020, a guy like P.J. Walker out of Houston ended up starting games for the Carolina Panthers. Taylor Heineke as well. Here's Quentin Dormady. And that's to the former Battle Hawk Jordan Thomas. There are seven players currently on XFL rosters that started the season with St. Louis and were cut from the Battle Hawks. Not because they were bad players, but because this roster is so loaded. It says a lot about Becht and scouting talent. It's one of the deepest rosters in the XFL, hands down. Quick hitter to Andrew Jamil. So here we go again. This is vital in the race with Seattle to close the gap on them in scoring offense and defense. St. Louis really cannot allow more points. Last time inside the 30, they got the interception by Lucas Dennis. They need something else along those lines. Because if both Seattle and St. Louis win, it will go to the fourth or maybe even fifth tiebreaker, which is the divisional rank of combined scoring offense and defense. Allowing 20 points already makes it an uphill battle for St. Louis. But it's still in the realm of possibility at 20. Draw for Dormany. He's got the first down. Right at the 20-yard line. Week 10 in the XFL continues with the defenders and Brahmas at 3 Eastern over on ABC. And tomorrow, the Renegades host the Roughnecks at 3 Eastern on ESPN. For the Vipers and Sea Dragons at 7 on ESPN2. Every game is also available on ESPN+. Plus. Every snap, every point is going to matter from start to finish in week number 10 to determine the final two spots in the XFL playoffs. D.C. with one loss to Orlando. That's it on the season. They've secured home field in the north. Houston has secured home field in the south. St. Louis has already scored 45 points this game. That's the most by any team in the XFL all season long. And so you think that they're not keeping track of what we're talking about? They know it full well. Dormady. That is complete to Charleston Rambo, the Miami Hurricane, and former OU Sooner. St. Louis. More than a stop, they need to take away again. On the ground to Martin, and it's a first down. So if both teams win, St. Louis would have to catch Seattle in both scoring offense and scoring defense to force a fifth tiebreaker or pass them in one of those categories. If they could pass them in both, they go. St. Louis goes. Fade ball, and that is the play that worked against San Antonio last week with big old Jordan Thomas. Now the easiest way to figure out this playoff scenario is a Seattle loss. Doesn't matter what happens here, St. Louis is automatically in. 
And even though you're up by 25 at this point, you're St. Louis, you're still looking at that clock tick and tick and tick in the XFL, whether it's an incomplete or out of bounds, the clock will, will not stop outside of those two minutes. And so you're trying to get a stop, but hurry up and get a turnover to get the ball back to your offense. Dormady, deep drop, swatted away looking for Cody Lattimore. And Brandon Sebastian with a PBU. That dude loves it. Third and goal, about to get loud. I'll go x -Fate. You heard the X fade by Shea Matthews, so you should be looking for number 81, Jordan Thomas, 6'5", 277. Looks left instead, touchdown, Charleston Ramble. That could be a backbreaker for the Battle Hawks. Yes, they're gonna win this game, but that could be the play that keeps St. Louis out of the playoffs. You can see the, the devastation on Anthony Beck's face. How do we give that up on third down? Obviously, you got Thomas on the outside, but you go to the backside to Rambo. But now, you talked about it. Those could be the points, but these two, low could be the points that matter. The easier path to catching Seattle would have been defensively to pitch a shutout in this game. But Orlando is not cooperating and put it on the spot to KD Cannon. And the conversion hits. Nothing to lose for Terrell Buckley and the Guardians. Everything on the line for St. Louis. Yeah, that smile might have got a little bit bigger for Coach Terrell Buckley. You see Charleston Rambo with the big touchdown and Anthony Beck wondering, wishing, hoping, will it be enough? And there's no discussion. San Antonio and he could get the Brahmas into the XFL playoffs but there's a must must beat DC a team that's only lost once and Arlington must also lose I don't know who that guy is but he's locked in and he's wearing a turtleneck to an XFL game fan of the day right there Orlando to kick it away 5-10 left to go in the fourth quarter. Those points allowed, potentially backbreakers for St. Louis. We'll get into the math here in just a moment. Darius Shepard with the return from the five. Darius Shepard looking for Green. Gets it to the 50. Still on his feet to the 40. Shepard showing why he's the best in the XFL at doing that. Turtleneck man. I don't know what's going on inside his head, but it's all admiration from here. You wonder why XFL coaches or really NFL coaches are looking at Darius Shepard. It's big returns like that. He came into this game leading the XFL in return yards, and he's continuing that march. A.J. McCarron closing in on Ben DiNucci for most passing yards in a game. Danucci has 377. Has McCarron has 354. They need more points. It will not be enough. McCarron, Shepard inside the 20 to the 10. So here's the beauty. You see it's almost like an outside zone play, an outside play. Darius Shepard gets the block from Gary Jennings and returns it. And then also the precision, the timing, the spacing of this route, of the pass. Darius Shepard, he's been doing this all season long. He's continuing in the special teams game and as a receiver. 384 for McCarron, an XFL record. Hey, kick cold. He's also got five cold, touchdowns. Looking to kick add cold. at least one Set. more. Kick cold. 180. Wait, Jennings at running back, showing some shiftiness. And the converted wide receiver inside the five-yard line. All right, looking at the math, this is what you need to know. Seattle needs to score more than 26 tomorrow against Vegas and allow less than 34. 
If they can do both of those things, Sea Dragons Lights are up. in. McCarran to Aitman, tried the Shepherd one-hander, could not get it. And at this point, Sam, it needs to be passing Seattle in both because the fifth tiebreaker would come into it if they only pass Seattle in one category. Number 55 is checking in as eligible. Number 55 is checked in as eligible. Because right now, if you look at the XFL wide numbers, Seattle is number two overall in scoring defense, and St. Louis is way back at five and could drop more. Right 80, right side. Third and goal. McCarron rocked off the fingertips of Butler. We've got a late flag. Is McCarron okay, though? In the inside. Yeah, it would be at the one-yard line. What's the number, 13? Number one? One. Pass interference, number one. Defense, ball be placed at the one-yard line. It's first down. It's against C.J. Holmes. And this is why, Lowell, to your point, all the other games matter. Because in that fifth tiebreaker, in the fifth tiebreaker, it goes to league-wide. And so that defensive mark, Seattle is way, way ahead. But those other games, Arlington, Houston, coming into this game, there is a six-point differential between what these teams have eligible. given up. And so maybe Arlington gives up some points in Houston, but you can't rely on all that to happen. First and goal for McCarron. Kareem Walker upended at the one-yard line. The most likely path for St. Louis, if it would have been wins for them and Seattle, would have been scoring defense. That has been a disappointment here. 73 points, tying the highest scoring game this season. 45 for St. Louis. That is an XFL best. Orlando standing tall. And Walker, half yard away. And the flag is out late. I've got a good spot at the one yard line. Seventy-three. All right, and we're going to go back, and it's going to so be, it's going to be 73. third down, correct? Yep, the offense. So it's St. Louis 73. N number 73, got right. it. Yanked him off the After pile. the play, the play is, is over, over. unsportsmanlike Unsports Unsports conduct. conduct number 73, offense. Yep. 15-yard penalty, the down counts. It's third down. That hurts. That is number 73's first unsportsmanlike conduct foul. Is there a lot there? Well, you see that the play is over. The referee's right there. They don't want players going into piles and pulling other opposing players off of piles. So that's where that call is called. Coming up on the two-minute warning. And it doesn't look like St. Louis will get a playoff. And we go to the final two minutes this is the two minute of the warning. season for the, the Orlando Guardians and potentially for Anthony Beck, A.J. McCarron, and St. Jordan Tamu. And D.C. trying to roll into the XFL playoffs with some momentum. They know they're hosting. Who's it going to be, though? St. Louis or Seattle? Before that, they've got the promise coming up next on ABC. Inside the Alamo Dome, San Antonio, that will be the host site of the XFL Championship game. Captain Kikaw fired up for the moment. I feel that way calling these games with you, Sam. It's a compliment. <laughs> Third and goal from the 15 for McCarran on a record setting day. for A.J. McCarron. I don't know if there's another team that has this many weapons. If it's not Stevie Mitchell, it's Akeem Butler. If it's not Akeem Butler, 
it's it's Marcel Aitman. If it's not Marcel Aitman, it's Darius Shepard. If it's not, it's Gary Jack. This offense is so explosive. And then, oh, by the way, no Brian Hill. Oh, by the way, your quarterback hey, is A.J. McCarron. St. Yeah. Louis lining hey. up for the two-point conversion. Hey. Go Razor! 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 Set! 180! One and McCarron to Butler. Two more. And trucks that football into the home field fans of St. Louis. Now here's something to think about. Anthony Beck told us coming into this game, he would be open to a late game onside kick. Now can't do the fourth and 15 because they lead. The problem is though, the points allowed are the bigger issue right now than points scored. If you don't convert on an onside kick, you put Orlando in great field position to score. So what you do now is you kick it off normally as planned, and then now you use your timeouts. It doesn't make sense. You're up by so much. No, it does. Use your timeouts. Stop the offense. And then you'll have your opportunity to get one more score. So we saw the point scenario there. Seattle needs to score more than 34 against Vegas and allow less than 34. With the win under those parameters, Seattle will go to the XFL playoffs. Dedrick Thomas. Hit brought down at the 25. And really, I would say the only hope outside of a Vegas upset for St. Louis is Vegas needs to score a ton of points. Because even if St. Louis passes Seattle with scoring offense, the margin is so big between those teams now and the overall XFL rankings, which would be your fifth tiebreaker, that they don't have a shot in that scenario with the fifth tiebreaker. Yeah, that's what makes it tough in this scenario. So on defense, you say, all right, guys, forget the scoreboard. Get a sack, get a pick six, force a turnover, give our offense the ball. Jordan Thomas brought down from behind by Travis Feeney. And what this also is, is a final two minutes, a celebration of a fantastic season for St. Louis, for the XFL here in St. Louis, and for Orlando, a team that has gone through their lumps, have a marquee win against DC, have given hope to Terrell Buckley with an early year of experience. Next year will be a different story for this Guardians franchise. And it's all these players who are getting an opportunity to play. Some of them will go to the next level. Some of them, this may be their last ride. Dormany feeling the pressure sliding down. Yeah, we talked to Terrell Buckley about a guy like Stansley Maponga, who we saw shaking it earlier in the game. Maponga. Is the oldest St. Louis player. has called the first charge timeout of the second half. It must be a 30-second timeout. Papanga, the oldest player on this Orlando team at 32 years. Terrell Buckley loves him. Has a new appreciation for what he means to the younger guys on the team. But that's a player, he doesn't know at his age. If he's getting another shot, this could be it. And he had his shot in the NFL, and he said, as a young player, I didn't really have the mentorship that I would have hoped for. Now, let me give that same mentorship to guys in this league. Maybe I'll extend their XFL career. Maybe I'll extend their NFL career, or at least teach them the habits that I did not have coming out of TCU. Playoffs start next week. Two teams are in, waiting for the final two. We may not know until the clock strikes zero in the final game of the XFL season. That is the way you want to build up drama and this league has delivered. And we talk about this, this game in the XFL North. 
the game after us. The XFL South has a huge matchup as well. San Antonio wins, needs Arlington to lose. Two playoff spots are open. Let's see how it unfolds. There's a third and five for Dormady. Looking for Jameer miscommunication that will bring up a fourth down. So what will be interesting here is Coach Buckley talks about all the fakes that he has up this week. This seems like a normal punt situation. <laughs> but what, what are you thinking? This fourth and five. Could you use one of those fakes right now to keep the other team from getting the ball back? We're going to go from one shutdown corner turned head coach to another. Because coming up next is the Colorado Spring Game with Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, as Orlando calls a timeout. Sam, I'm excited to see what Deion Sanders can do in Boulder, Colorado. Come on now. Are you serious? The most swaggy dude in the world coming out, probably greeting Ralphie with the cowboy hat on. That is the dude right there. One of my heroes growing up. Prime top. T-Mac. Well, you guys know I'm from Denver, Colorado. I have a ton of friends who graduated from Boulder, and I have not in my lifetime felt the same excitement for Colorado football. It's really cool for the entire state, just what Dion has done there. And just to make sure it's in full Colorado condition, it's like 28 degrees in Boulder today. So. Absolutely love it. Taylor McGregor, Ian Fitzsimmons, and another Mac Brown fake. Will this one work? Picked off! Brandon Sebastian with number two. Clock strikes midnight for the Magic Man, Mac Brown. Dominate the day. What a time to make a play like that. So it's a fake. You know it's a fake. But see the coverage. Everyone's staying back in your zone. Even if the quarterback, in this case, the punter, rolls out to one side, stay in your zone. The ball gets tipped oh. up in the air. Yeah. Make the play for your team. Here's Bart. Oh. Yeah. It's amazing how so many of the mic'd up moments of the head coaches, it's just them screaming, yes, go. <laughs> it's jubilation. Sometimes Every you don't left. have the words to say, but that feeling is too out. much. Those are the magic numbers. This is why Seattle has the advantage. If Seattle wins and they score Seven. more than 34 points and allow Vegas to less than 34, Why Seattle Why will go to the XFL playoffs over St. Louis. And at this point, as we're shedding tackles here in St. Louis, bouncing off Gary Jennings. The edge decidedly goes to St. Louis, excuse me, to Seattle in the tiebreak scenarios. But I'm not ready to write off Seattle. If they did it in the first week, they could do it again. I mean, St. Louis with the magic. That fourth and 15 comeback against San Antonio. They can still get in if Vegas pulls the upset against the Sea Dragons. Who's your favorite to win it all, Sam? DC has been hard to stop. That's the thing. But if if you if St. Louis finds a way in, right? DC's been hard to stop. Seattle, I think, is one of the, if not the most complete team. But if St. Louis finds a way in with this offense, they're gonna be dangerous. I'm saying Seattle's the team to beat. Because what we overlook with the Sea Dragons, and we talk so much about June Jones, Danucci, Pearson, all the playmakers that they have around them, Josh Gordon. That Ron Zook defense, it's the best in the league. They are the best in the league from the front end to the back end. Look at guys like Lyndon Stevens on the back end, Antoine Brooks. Then you got the pass rushers, guys like Tuzar Skipper. Hey. They are a complete team. And that's why Boss. we're looking at these numbers it's like, Boss. man, we're going to get this win and we'll be fine. That's what Sit. they're thinking as they watch. Stop! Stop it! Wait! Wait, Ted! The turn ball is up. Big ball! He's got it! And sliding down and taking the hit is Jared Jones Smith. 28. Ball's at the 28-yard line where he picked it up. 28-yard line. I got your spot. 28. Recovered. It was recovered here. We got it at the 28. We killed it there. 
Good deal. What, Connor, what do we have here, bud? I got a hurt late hit. Talk to me. Is that is that you saying slow down, D? Yeah. I got a late hit on number 48. 48 late hit? Yeah. Okay. Taking a cheap shot. Dean good with that? He actually... You have it on the, uh, the player that recovered the fumble? No, sir. I've got it on the guy who tat who just hit the guy who recovered the fumble. Yeah. The the, the, the player that recovered... White. Pick it up. Pick it up. There's no foul. Pick There's it no, up. Okay. And we're going to... There's no foul on the play. He picked count. it up at the 31, gonna guys. Take, he's going to take a time. To the 31, Crystal. Move it to the 31. He picked it up at the 31. 31. 31. 31, 31. 31 yard line is where he picked it up. It's fourth down. That's correct. Fourth down at the 31. Fourth down at the 31. Who called St. Louis did? Great. Timeout, guys. What down is it? St. Louis has called check. a timeout. It'll be fourth down. Do we want to kick a field goal? Kick a field goal. Field goal, field goal, field goal. Field goal, field goal, field goal, field goal. It's definitely fourth down. Definitely fourth so down. Back. Looking for all so the points play, he can get right here. Check. And it's going to be Donnie Hagman. Hagman, the man that had the game-winning field goal in week two against Seattle. St. Louis could have clinched their spot with a win against Seattle in this building last week. Came up short. Now it will be in the hands of the Vegas Vipers to put the Battle Hawks into the XFL playoffs. 49 yards for Hagman. The kick is up. No good. So what does Terrell Buckley and Orlando do in the final 30 seconds? And how does St. Louis respond? They absolutely cannot Don't allow run, any man. more Wait, points. But well, the XFL has delivered overall. This is the comparison with scoring offense and defense. If both St. Louis and Seattle win, it will come down to the combined rank in the division with scoring offense and defense. The large edge is now held by Seattle. They score more than 34 points against Vegas and allow less than 34. Seattle is in. If both teams win, the only real way you can see St. Louis, the only way you can see St. Louis advancing is if there are a ton of points scored by Vegas against the Seattle defense. Well, it's not over yet, low. So it looks like Anthony Beck just called the timeout to challenge. So some help from Steven Gonzalez on this challenge. There's one remaining. Okay. Yep. Normal rush, no foul. After review, there is no foul on the play. It's first down, Orlando. Can't take it with you. So you lose the challenge. And what a success story the XFL has been in the city of St. Louis. And Orlando will just take a knee. Terrell Buckley learned a ton in year number one. He's hoping to be back for a turnaround with the Guardians next year. St. Louis, however. Out to a standing goal from the home faithful hey, as they you put up the most points on, right? in the league this year. Right. AJ yeah, McCarron yeah, 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 yeah. with the record 420. We'll get the game and play some golf, talk a little bit, chop it up. Congratulations, no doubt. Thank you. And now, Sam, for St. Louis, they have to sit and wait. They have to sit and wait. But more than anything, 
kudos to every single player in this league, every single coach in this league, all the crews who have covered this league, and most importantly, the fans who have watched the XFL last regular season week. Congratulations to you. Colorado.